Hello my dear friends, today we are going to read from multiple books. We have had a hundred years of psychotherapy. We are going to read from this book, uh, James Hillman. We have had a hundred years of analysis and people are getting more and more sensitive and the world is getting worse and worse. Maybe it's time to look at that. This is the American ideology of the snowflake that people who go for therapy are like sissies and ninnies and people who are snowflakes and people who are not hard enough or masculine enough can men cry or go for therapy because psychotherapy is only working on that inside soul by removing the soul from the world and not recognizing that the soul is also in the world psychotherapy can't do its job anymore so is this true the child archetype um, democracy depends on intensely active citizens not children so a modern strong democracy needs uh, not children but active adults the fantasy of growth is a romantic harmonious fantasy of an ever expanding uh, and ever integrating capitalist system. Is this true? So let's have a look at Plato's Republic, uh, translated by Alan Badiou. Badiou demonstrates uh, the tripartite structure of truth in the Republic in the relationship of myth, education, and collective life. The truth of uh, politia involves both symbolic buildup and the true lies or imaginary constructions of utopia and, and utopian myth so that the critique of the current situation can open the possibility of another world. But where does uh, James uh, Hillman stand with reference to this possibility, this politia, his understanding of democracy? Family always existed in the context of one's ancestors. Our bones are not in this ground because America, of course, is uh, you know a colonized space. Uh, the principal content of American psychology is developmental psychology. The principal content of American psychology is developmental psychology. So the trauma of the past, uh, the sins of the ancestors are visited upon uh, the present generation. Uh, the history is our casualty. We don't even separate history as a story from history as a cause. So American history is a trauma they are trying to wake up from. History is a nightmare the Americans are trying to make up from. That's the trauma. That's the childhood, the childhood American, perpetual childhood of the American adolescents. Uh, so uh, that's it. So Hillman says that uh, if you go to therapy, watch out for the collusion between therapist and a part of you that does not want to feel the awe. There are many ways to repress feeling the awe, one of which is processing it. So he introduces the concept of awe, this uh, metallurgy concept. Uh, the dictate psychology has to be respectable. This produces a terrible repression of the actual psychologist. We are not allowed in the street. So he is going uh, deep into uh, the sociological aspects of psychoanalysis. We have to be careful, pretty correct, not extreme or radical. Political correctness, which Slavo Zizek also mentions in this context, is very crucial. Uh, so, Hillman goes into a kind of revolution, which means uh, turning over, not development or unfolding, but upturning, revolution, like the earth revolves around the sun. It's a turning uh, down of the order. Okay? Uh, so, Part of the treatment of these difficulties is to look at a person's schedule, a uh, non-book uh, calendar because schedule is one of your biggest defenses. Your defense is your schedule. Your schedule. So, a tribal life. In tribal life and religion, there was often a place for people who were different. Homosexuals, are they different? Is this homophobic? I'm not so sure. Uh, missionaries, harmless people with special qualities or powers. This was not unknown in village life either. But in the city life of the ancient Greeks, not that these were perfect societies, but they had a place. Uh, for uh, place uh, holders for this. Valdez, Popal, Chernobyl had, had made everything toxic. Valdez, uh, Popal, Chernobyl, these are sites of horrible tragedies, industrial uh, disasters. They have made everything toxic. So, toxicity of environment would also go into toxicity of the human. Okay? Uh, the kids in solution, uh, kids, a few, uh, uh, kids, uh, kids separates you from the uh, inner uh, outer the inner good soul is separated from the outer is that a good solution uh, so he mentions uh, the ship of death lawrence says we must each build is no longer a private ark that can take the storms the ship of death is a world soul it's a world soul is another myth of plato 
So Badiu in his magisterial uh, translation of uh, Plato says that uh, politeness requires us to go along with this kind of disquisition and even to request more of the same. It was for the sole purpose of giving the old man the floor again that Socrates came out with the uh, remark. So there is something called the uh, myth of Plato. Uh, so where does the myth of uh, psychoanalysis merge with the myth of Plato? Oh, I really hate their translation of technique. I will come up with a different one as the night goes on. Anyway, the technique whose former name used to be mercenaryism and uh, Socrates was a Hippolyte. Uh, and that now that it's ubiquitous is called wage earning has no specific function other than to bring in wages They are wage earners naturally you will now you never confuse a doctor with an airline pilot if and this is the true that you the stickler for precise language are imposing on us We have to define words with the utmost precision We would never call a ship's captain a doctor merely because the passengers intoxicated by the CIO are in great shape so I ask you, can we call any old form of wage earning medicine in as much as as a wage earner feels better because he received his pay? If anything that makes you feel better is actually a medicine, can you call this medicine? Can you call psychotherapy a medicine? What is the pharmacon here? What is the poison here? Is the poison itself the medicine? So let's uh, look at uh, what cybernetics would say. It's a paper on cybernetics. And before that, let's look at Jacques Derrida's work on Heidegger, the question of being and history. It is magisterial is the word to describe this. It is magisterial work. Jacques Derrida says that uh, uh, Jacques Derrida makes a preposition there will never be any chance of undressing or stripping down this naked thinking of being which has never naked and never will be. Uh, thinking never was naked. There never is uh, going to be a kind of Freudian stripping of the human psyche uh, as far as Heidegger is concerned. Uh, uh, Heidegger's language seems metaphorical. The proper meaning of the word house or the word dwelling is out of reach for a speaking that does not speak on the basis of the truth of being. That's the question. So stripping down is not Heidegger's agenda. Metaphor does not occur in language as a rhetorical procedure. It is the beginning of language. So there is a movement towards the origins in uh, Martin Heidegger. Uh, so uh, this uh, happens uh, in a convoluted fashion in cybernetics. Uh, the most fundamental contribution of cybernetics is its explanation of purposiveness or goal-oriented behavior, an essential characteristic of mind and life. There is a teleology of cybernetics. So we have uh, come from uh, James Hillman to Plato uh, via Badiou uh, to Heidegger via Jacques Derrida and finally we have settled on cybernetics. It's the purpose, uh, the teleology of cybernetics. Thank you so much.